Right. You find that uh, the, the magistrate's court in Nairobi, for example, has 129 matters, whereas in the counties there are uh, few matters in, uh, scattered in different uh, counties. All right. And then the applications are the ones which are very many at the high court level, and those are the ones which need to be dealt with urgently. So how does this court solve the runarounds we've seen some of these cases take in as far as the judiciary is concerned? That is the, the, the reason this division has been set up, because when these matters are scattered in the different divisions, they are not labeled as, as anti-corruption matters, because if they're in the criminal division, for example, they are just a review or an appeal like any other, and they queue. They're because they're of the sheer volumes of the matters in those divisions. If they are in the, in the civil division, for example, they, for asset recovery, they have to queue like the others. But when they come to the anti-corruption uh, division, a judge is able to, to get the application today, give directions for service, and, and when the parties come the next day, they can actually be heard if they are ready. Within a day or a week, they can be heard because that is all that this division is doing. All right, we've also heard that 70% of the reasons why we're seeing slow pace in prosecuting corruption matters is outside the judiciary. So the judiciary has put this division in place, but what are you doing in as far as working with other agencies to ensure that, again, it doesn't go back to the blame game of shifting the ball and saying uh, in the back it's a different agency that's uh, letting the war in corruption down? That's why if you notice today, it was a multi-agency approach. It was not the judiciary launching it alone. You saw the Honorable the Chief, the, the, the chief Justice surrounded by the, 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 attorney, the, the Honorable Attorney General, the DPP, and the um, ESCC, and even some of our other stakeholders, and we also had the president of the Law Society of Kenya. But Judge, let me jump in. Let's talk specifics. And as far as, for example, prosecutors are concerned, because that's a real issue, that you have very few prosecutors dealing with very many matters. So do you have more prosecutors as well that will be dedicated to corruption matters? The DPP has given that assurance. And so far, the matters that we have done, because we started sitting in, in July with the, with the other judge in the division, there is not a single day that we did not have a, a prosecutor uh, before us. Sometimes in complex matters, there were even two prosecutors. So the DPP has given that assurance that they will be ready to, to, to move at the pace we are setting. And speaking of mega corruption, Kenyans have seen many cases. We report on that every other day here on KTN News. And many want to see those being implicated and that are guilty, you know, uh, held to account. So how does this, you know, division ensure that the men and women who serve uh, and are set apart in this group are above reproach? Is there some form of vetting because then you'll see this sort of cartels and corrupt individuals trying to compromise these same individuals. So are you looking into that? Um, for the Chief Justice to have um, made this appointment, he has already looked at the men and women that he's putting in that division. And I don't think it's fair to say that there are some judges who cannot be put in those divisions. It is just that the same way we have a dedicated division, for example, for the family division, we have a dedicated division for criminal, for commercial, so that those matters are given um, the, 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 the fast track that they need. It's not because some judges cannot be trusted. It's about fast tracking those matters so that these judges and those magistrates dedicate themselves to only matters, anti-corruption and economic crime. All right. Thank you so much, Judge Lydia Achode, for making time for us here on KTN Prime. Thank you. All right. And remember, our big cue tonight is drawn from that story we're talking about there. Do you expect trial of mega corruption cases to be concluded in three months as planned? That is what the Chief Justice has today announced as he launched that division of the anti-corruption and economic crimes. So talk to us, KTN News, KTN Kenya, or at Sophia Wanuna. In other news, chaos continued to rock the Jubilee Party elections for interim officials in various parts of the country as the exercise entered day three. And as Wakisa Wandera reports, more disgruntled leaders are now threatening to ditch the party. Day three. 
and the situation seemingly not any different from that of the first two days as interim officials for the Jubilee party are elected. One woman in Samburu County was seriously injured as leaders eyeing various party positions publicly defed. Chaos erupted after two groups supporting different candidates for county posts clashed at Alamano Catholic Church in Marlal Town. The elections were later held with the leaders agreeing on who should hold different positions. <laughs> In Nyeri County, the sins were no different as the thorn of party elections went deep into the flesh of the Jubilee Party. Some of the aspirants turned violent, questioning the formula used to come up with a list of party officials. Then it became a shouting match, some deciding that screaming might just get them heard. Consequently, bringing the meeting to an abrupt end, the elections were not held. As politics and personal interests take center stage in this exercise, some disgruntled leaders are looking at other options. Embu politician and gubernatorial aspirant Gidinji Kiragu is one of them. He has ditched the party, citing divisive politics at play. Kiongozi ambao wanatamani sana kuongoza hii county, wanataka kutumia hii siyasa ya njupiri kuawanya watu wa Embu na Wambere. The exercise is expected to end on Friday. Akisa Wandera, KTN News. <laughs> For the second time in six years, a Kenyan president has reopened the pan paper mills in Bungoma. And just like in 2010, the reopening comes at a critical stage in Kenya's national politics. And to underscore just how hot the issues are in the western region, court leader Raila Odinga and President Uhuru Kenyatta will be bypassing each other tomorrow as Uhuru leaves and Raila arrives. And our reporter Robert Wanyoni has that story for us. They touched down at the Matulo airstrip in Ibungoma County for day one of their western region offensive. The Jubilee top two latest incursion was given a new thrust by the presence of former leaders from ODM who expressed their unwavering support for the Jubilee party. Rais Uzichari na mambo ya watu ya NASA. Awa ni watu ambao wamechanganyikiwa. Awa na wanapikania kutafuta nani ni kiongozi wao. Na zizi tuendele mbele katika siyaza na tunahaki tutakupea kura. Kopsiro in Mount Elgon region was their first stop where Uhuru issued title deeds to the residents before they headed to the revamped pan paper mills, now renamed Rai Paper Mills, where he launched the paper farm. Kama umepatiwa na fasi yako ya kufanya kazi hii yote miaka hiyo yote ambao umekuweko, kwa sababu wale wengine ambao wananitusi huko, wananifanya, wananaita, sawa sawa, lakini na wauliza, miaka hiyo yote, walifanya nini, kwa sababu watu kuona wakifungua factory kama hii. Hii factory mesuma rais, imekuwa hapa kwa sasa miaka kumi na moja haifanyi kazi na hiyo miaka kumi na moja kulikuwa na serekali kenya ni kweli ya masikweli ni serekali ya jubili ambayo wewe unaongoza umefika hapa leo kuanzisha rasmi tena kiwanda hii ifanyi kazi the centrality of the pan paper mills in Kenya's politics is betrayed by the fact that President Mwai Kibaki on 29th of July 2010 also reopened the very same factory after it stalled for one year over an 8.1 billion shilling debt. At that time, President Kibaki was leading the year's campaign for the proposed constitution. The government even appointed a task force to dig into the problems bedeviling the plant. It seems the factory was forgotten soon after the new constitution was passed, only to be remembered again this year. And just as has been the norm lately, the opposition got its fair share of the flag from the president and his deputy. Safari hii, kwa sababu nyingi, nimewambia, safari hii hatu wawachi. Siyasa za propaganda, ndiyo zimesababisha watu wetu wakose kupata stima na matibabu kwa mahospitali. Jameni. Tuwe watu ambao... 
the president later toured Kakamega County, where he commissioned the tamaking of the Kakamega Navaholo Musikoma Road before giving medical equipment to the Kakamega County Referral Hospital. The tour continues this Friday with the president expected on another tour of Bungoma County before winding up his visit in Busia County. And in spite of the opposition or criticism from the opposition, the president has said the Jubilee government will continue reaching out to Kenyans to start many projects. Robert Wanyonyi, KTN News, in Webuye, Bungoma County. Now, a push by court leader Raila Odinga to have the opposition present a compromise candidate in 2017 is fueling political debate. But political commentators say the quest for a united opposition to kick out Jubilee from power will remain a pipe dream unless leaders in the opposition sacrifice personal interest. Patrick Amimo has tonight's Spotlight 2017. Attempts by the opposition to remove the Independence Party colonel from power after the reintroduction of multi-party politics in 1992 failed for lack of a united opposition. <laughs> opposition politicians realized their folly and united under the National Radical Coalition NAC in October 2002. <laughs> NAC ended Kano's 40-year rule when its presidential candidate Uhuru Kenyatta was strongly defeated by NAC's Mwai Kibaki. I accept the choice of the people and in particular, now concede that Mr. Mwai Kibaki will be the third president of the Republic of Kenya. As the country shapes up for the August general election next year, opposition leader Raila Odinga and Code Corps principals Kalonzo Musioka and Moses Wetangula have been searching for a united opposition candidate to face off with Jubilee's Uhuru Kenyatta. <laughs> Jubilee leadership has often taunted code to name its flag bearer to no avail. Raila's effort to unite the opposition appears to be bearing fruit. Amani national leader Musalia Mudavadi has since joined forces with code. The leaders seem to be reading from the same script. Everybody is now putting down their ambitions, saying that whoever is chosen by the United Opposition under NASA, we shall back him. It's a kind of temperature, it's a kind of political terrain that we saw in 2002. Is now alive and very well with us right now. So Jubilee has to plan very strategically, go back to the drawing board. And that's why there's a lot of, uh, if, you, if you remember what Moi kept on saying, the outside world is trying to influence Kenyan politics, the outside world the embassies and so on, we are seeing the same language. We are seeing the same, same language of almost crying foul before the actual event. A few months ago, there was a certain feeling of complacency within the Jubilee fraternity. They were taking next year's uh, election as a, a done deal. They were looking at it as a fait accompli and uh, talking, in fact, of uh, 2022. They have got to go back to their drawing boards. This is uh, happening at a time when uh, there's affection, disaffection in parts of uh, the Rift Valley. You cannot uh, take the goings on in the South Rift among the Kipsigis community for granted. Raila Odinga appears to be very determined to have a regime change. He has accused the ruling Jubilee of runaway corruption, lack of inclusivity, attempts to kill devolution, and reversal of democratic gains. The opposition says there are sufficient grounds for voters to remove Jubilee from power and have the opposition form the next government. We are stronger and more united than ever. Ready to face the Jubilee as an expanding opposition. We must come together and dispassionately agree on a single presidential candidate for the 2017 elections. Kuna jukumu kubwa la kuhakikisha wa Kenya wanaondoa serikali ya Jubilee. What I think is helping the NASA uh, speak is the victory of the opposition in Gambia and the victory of opposition in Ghana. All these came against the uh, uh, government uh, that were wilting, but at the same time very strong. If at this point in time, towards 2017, they put their personal interests first, they will themselves be lost in the process in 2017 because Kenyans are not going to accept a person who carries personal interests first as opposed to nationhood. They are coming together is to try and bring back that thing in 2003. Uh, we were voted 
us mm -hmm. that the we most the most optimistic nation. We lost the cause and President Mwai Kibaki lost that dream for us. Political parties and coalitions in Kenya have been used by politicians as vehicles to political office. The NAC dream was short-lived after a section of the coalition led by Raila Odinga accused a faction led by Mwai Kibaki of shortchanging them over a post-election deal. Even when Jubilee formed government after the 2013 polls, there were murmurs of disgruntlement over sharing of positions in government and state agencies. As the opposition works on a united front, will players repeat past mistakes? They know how Kibaki should change them. And they are aware that uh, these things must be written, must be declared through public offering, and there must be official documents launched with the regions of parties. Party Kamimo, KTA News. Tonight, now continuing accountability series on county audit reports, Francis Ontomwa focuses on Kwale County. Take a look. A few minutes after sunset, business people at Ukunda are busy wrapping up the day. This is Kuala's largest town and a focal point of the county's tourism sector. But even as people go on with their businesses, it still hasn't escaped them that the Auditor General had serious queries on the manner their bosses used their taxes. Topping the list of the queries is how the county paid 45 million shillings to some staff who are still earning their normal dues. Resident wants answers. The governor of Kwale says the report makes premature conclusions. I'm happy with for Kwale County government is that uh, we are open to these processes and uh, we have nothing to hide. It does not end there. The Auditor General says eight million was spent on buying three seedlings. 200,000 of them were bought. According to the report, the project was kept under the auspices of county ward administrators. But during the audit, the Auditor General could not establish where they were planted in the first place. And what has largely been described as Governor Mvuria's legacy, education, hasn't been spared either. Some 1,920 students who passed to join national schools from Kwale are on full government sponsorship. 25 million shillings spent on scholarships for 68 students in India. The Auditor General wants to know how the money was allocated for each student. Further, the Department of Transport is accused of spending some 14 million shillings on taxi services. However, no explanation was given on why it was necessary to spend such huge sums of money on taxi services. I'm happy with the 47 days that KTN uh, normally does every evening. But what I've been wondering is it is not possible to bring that documentation in that forum. Independent reports have in the past shown quality is one of Kenya's counties that have exhibited prudent utilization of public funds. This notwithstanding, the Auditor General wants an even cleaner record. As many Kenyans here in Kuala strive to make ends meet, the question of transparency and accountability remains key to them. It is no doubt that corruption will feature strongly in the run-up to next year's general election. Francis Ontomwa, KTN News, Ukunda, Kuala County.
of Embu plans to produce its own solar power electricity to save on electricity costs and on income. The Chancellor, Professor Musili Wambua, revealed they target to produce 3 megawatts of power, which would be adequate for their internal needs and sell the surplus to the national greed. Professor Wambua said they already have a committee working on the feasibility studies and financing of the project through a partner. The Chancellor spoke at the University Bodrum while signing a memorandum of understanding with Standard Group meant to promote visibility for the newly chartered university. Just now, before the Standard Group team came in, we were discussing uh, about solar projects, how we can actually do away with paying bills. And we have already identified, there's a committee set up, we have identified um, uh, a partner who can actually invest in that solar project and uh, produce enough uh, for us to stop paying the bills and in five years they can recoup whatever they have invested and then we'll be getting extra income from the sale. And this is where we come in at the standard group. Specifically, there are things that we've agreed with, uh, with the university. One is the partnership with Smart Harvest, which is our Saturday uh, publication in, on, the, on the Saturday, on, 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 on the standard on Saturday. We would like to drive that partnership with content coming from this university. And we've had very good discussions around how the faculty and the students of this university could work with our journalists to advance the content in that uh, publication. My name is Joy Doreen Bira. Time for business. Kenya stands to gain more tax revenue if the country grows her middle class, which has been on the upward growth trajectory, now contributing about 270 billion shillings to the economy. In a report by the Institute of Economics of Economic Affairs, Kenya's middle class has grown by at least 22% in the last seven years to now stand at 277,000 of the 2.5 million formerly employed population. The survey further revealed that income levels have surged upwards as more companies set up bases in the country. Out of the major towns and cities, Nairobi and Mombasa emerged as having the highest concentration of middle class, averaging 42%, with the best being spread to Kisumu, Thika and Nakuru. As the cost of living. Women, based on our definition in the public in the private sector, in the public sector has grown. It's it's, it's basically it's it's it's, it's grown. Uh, but the public sector is driving public sector wages. Huge number of those who are women who then become public sector, I mean who then become who qualify as a middle class. So part of it is basically the behavior of the public sector, because our public sector is very big in Kenya, though the private sector is much bigger will actually tell you whether you're creating middle-class people from incomes. Remember, because we are measuring from incomes. In a bid to further empower youths in the country, Standard Group Limited and Safaricom have entered into an 150 million shillings partnership to roll out the second phase of Blaze. Kenya has been trying to push the youth empowerment agenda to create employment for years. The move by both companies will not only provide entertainment, but also a learning platform for young Kenyans. It is reported that one in every five Kenyan youth has no job, compared to Uganda and Tanzania, where about one in every 20 are jobless. This makes Kenya one of East Africa's biggest economies, the country with the largest number of unemployed youth in the region. Initiatives such as Blaze, a youth empowerment program championed by Safaricom and Standard Group, seeks to transform the lives of young Kenyans and in the long term change this narrative. Currently winding up its first season and set to launch its second in February of next year, Blaze Be Your Own Boss looks to reward one youth with 8 million shillings, 5 million of which will be in form of business support from Safaricom and 3 million in cash. The narrative for the youth can no longer be about entertainment, about uh, lack of opportunity. This initiative seeks to empower. 
Among the challenges young rising entrepreneurs face a lack of proper support and financing to develop their skills, passion and talents into businesses. The Be Your Own Boss hourly reality show will debut 6th February of 2017 on KTN and run for 8 straight weeks. 12 participants will face a panel of judges who will evaluate their ideas on weekly challenges including social skills provides us with an opportunity to reach a much, a much wider audience uh, on this Blaze platform and get a lot more youth engaged. And the objective of the TV show is actually one to amplify the stories of these young Blazers because we are engaging with them but we need the rest of the country to see what is actually happening in this young generation. Listed retailer Dickens East Africa has acquired the exclusive rights to supply clothing brand FNF as the international clothing line makes an entry into the Kenyan consumer market. And Dickens plans to open its doors at the Hab in Nairobi on 16th of December through a partnership with Tesco, the British retail giant that has more than 6,900 shops across the United Kingdom and the rest of the world. Speaking during the official signing of the partnership, Dickens. Uh, PLC Chief Executive Officer Mushiri Wahome added that Kenyans will now be able to shop for brands locally without having to travel abroad. Uh, segment, uh, we were lacking what you would call a family offering, um, uh, one that starts from, 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 from birth right through uh, to adulthood. Um, so we think um, from, from a perspective of the competitive space that we're working in, uh, it's going to offer great value uh, uh, for our customers. Um, it's owned by Tesco, one of the world's largest retailers, and started off uh, in 2000 in the UK as uh, essentially uh, Tesco's own label, uh, fa fashion brand. So it covers everything from baby through to older girls, older boys, men's and ladies. It's a full family offer, uh, which fits well with the Tesco. Uh, Tesco. Welcome back to KTN Prime. Let us now talk sports. And skydiving is one of the extreme sports gaining popularity here in Kenya since it was introduced four years ago. In a way of expanding the sport, Skydive Diani conducts training programs for locals with the aim of forming a Kenyan team. Dozens of Kenyans, and not excluding professional skydivers from across the world, visit Skydive Diani to get the once-in-a-lifetime experience while enjoying the breathtaking view of Kenya's coastline. We can do what they do the rest over the, throughout the rest of the world and land in a field somewhere inland. But when you've got the Indian Ocean on your doorstep, why would you choose to land anywhere else other than on the white sand? After 20 minutes brief and safety measures, divers board a plane which flies to the jump altitude of 15,000 feet above sea level. When the plane is lined up properly over the jump site, the skydivers jump out. the craziness it's just the adrenaline it's just adrenaline pumping because you're prompted before you jump so immediately you're you're going down you're just in the ground you're not thinking of anything but for me i really wanted to jump so i had to do it before the end first time divers are normally attached to an instructor in what is called a tandem jump the instructor does 80 percent of the work while gravity takes care of the rest after a 60 second free fall the skydiver throws out a pilot chute which then deploys the parachute. In case the parachute fails to open, an automatic parachute is activated when the diver reaches a certain altitude. Then the skydiver steers the parachute to line up for landing. It takes about 6 minutes to cover a distance of 15,000 feet, approximately 4.5 kilometers. Six minutes of pure adrenaline rush. There's three types of skydive. The one we've just been talking about, which is for the first timers. Uh, then obviously the second type of skydive is for somebody who can already skydive on their own and they just come along and join us. And then the third type is how we, we train people. It takes about five days. Recently, the group provided a special training program to the Kenya Army paratroopers and is planning to form a team that will represent Kenya in skydiving competitions across the world. Abula Ahmed. Kate in sports. That looks like a lot of fun and it's definitely on my bucket list.
Now, the 2016 Soya Awards will see five coaches from different sporting fields battle for the 2016 Coach of the Year Award when the annual awards are held later this year. The quintet will be highlighted by the five coaches, which include Harambe Starlet's tactician David Ouma. Ouma led his charges to their first ever participation in the Ocon, though the side failed to progress from the group stage. Henry Kidwa, the athletics head coach during the concluded Rio Olympics, will also be expected to take the gong. After leading the Kenya Sevens team to a maiden World Seven Series win in Singapore, former Sevens coach Benjamin Ayimba is also among the nominees, together with Jos Openda Hawk coach. The only lady nominated in that category is Catherine Mabui, national under-23 volleyball coach, and she led the Malkia Strikers Juniors, who qualified for the 2017 World Under-23 